It's yeah. acceptable. I think all journalists at their best ride the cusp of acceptability. Journalism is a rough business. To get to the truth when a lot of people in public bodies and political figures and so on are, are lying and obfuscating, deliberately hiding and misleading, sometimes journalists have to play dirty too. And to pretend otherwise, I think, is ridiculous. The Mirror, in my time, I believe, operated legally, but operated right on that line. We drove very, very hard to expose wrongdoing where we saw it, to investigate wars, to investigate yeah. political lying and so on. Now, but, but, now the, the, line, the line is legality. You know, there is law. There's British law, there's American law. And it's there. And it wasn't enforced in Britain with the hacking. All Spain were love and war, as long as it's legal. Legal and responsible. Yeah. There has and to be what, a purpose to it. And what drives people beyond the legality is competition. Because you are worried that you're losing readership I because you're going across to that other tabloid because yeah. they've got more stuff. Yeah, but let's not pretend it was just a tabloid thing. You know, I mean, it, I'm not. I no, mean, but I let just, me give an example. The, the Daily well, we've been talking about three newspapers at work. But the Daily Telegraph is a very fine, respected right. broadsheet newspaper in Britain, and it broke the law when it paid for the information that led to the exposure of MPs' expenses. That was stolen. That information, so they broke the law. I totally endorse that law breaking. It was right to do that. You know, so then how elements, is the elements of wiki, when is it right elements of wiki law? Elements of WikiLeaks right. were clearly illegal. Okay, so how, Journalists that repeat them are also breaking the law. They're a, accessories. Okay, fair enough. But So what's the test? Is one, it's okay to break the law? You've got to have good lawyers who tell you where the law line is drawn, and then you have the public interest. Yeah, test. I thought you were saying it's okay to break the law. No, no, no. No, if, in fact, the story no. is about exposing corruption or whatever Well, let me give an example. The, the, rather than... Well, I think occasionally it can be, for the reasons I've just stated. The MP's expenses, the newspaper broke the law to reveal it, yeah. but it was in the public interest. Now, what and is so, it? therefore, it's okay. If it's in the public interest, I it's think okay if there is an overt public, the if there's an open public interest, yes, I think it can be defended. And court, but that's the problem. But, but courts, but that's the problem. The courts have upheld this. But the, well, the problem is defining what's in the public interest. That is the key problem. That is the key issue because the public interest defined by a tabloid newspaper would differ substantially from that of a yeah. broadsheet newspaper. The news agendas are different. Is it fair that the only stories which are in the public interest and therefore law-breaking is permissible should be the news agenda of a so-called serious newspaper. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No. It's open for debate. But it's, it, that is, to me, where the grey area is, and that is, to me, where the argument has to be properly had and the rules of engagement established. All right. Let me get you from London to New York, all right? <laughs> so you're in the midst of all of that, and, and, and you get fired. Yeah. Uh, you obviously had to make a decision, you know, i got to get another place. Mm. I got to do something. I, where do I go from here? Mm. How do I come back? Mm. So what did you do? I'd done a bit of television in Britain. Um, and successfully, there were certain programs you had that I read about. Yeah, yeah. I, I did one called Tabloid Tales. It right. was actually me interviewing famous people, politicians and celebrities who'd been through the tabloid mincer. And there was me, one of the orchestrators perhaps of their mincing, going over their experience. And it was an interesting program and it did pretty well. And on the back of that, when I got fired from the mirror, Simon Cowell rang me up, right. and took me for lunch, and he said, I've got this idea for a talent show. Um, he said, it'll be like American Idol, but it'll be much wider based, any age, any talent. And by this time, American Idol was wildly successful. Hugely. It was the biggest show in the world. Right. And uh, he said, I want somebody who's a bit like me, evil, arrogant and obnoxious, and your name immediately sprang to mind. I said, that's very kind. He said, what? He said, I want somebody like me, evil, arrogant, and obnoxious, and your name sprang to mind. <laughs> Did you accept Gosh. that with pleasure? I smirked. Evil. I, I got the point. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think I was overtly evil, um, but the others I couldn't really quibble with from time to time. So I said, fine. I was flown to Los Angeles. Uh, I'd only been to America very few times in my life, interviewed by NBC executives who didn't know much about me, but Simon kept pushing. Um, These were entertainment executives? Yeah, from NBC, yeah. And um, anyway, cut a long story short, I was hired. And as the hit. British judge, and the show went to number one, and it stayed there ever since. And then came Donald Trump. Then came Donald Trump. And what did he do for you? He launched a new version of The Apprentice called Celebrity Apprentice. Right. It was another NBC show. So NBC were like, you know, we'd like you to take part in this. How do you feel? I said, I like The Apprentice. It's a kind of reality show for smart people. I like Donald Trump. He, he, I find him very entertaining, fascinating character in many ways. And I said, I'll, I'll do it. And I ended up winning it um, by being fairly brutal fairly uh, British, I guess, in my style. 
mm. rubbing people up the wrong way, um, being pretty uncompromising. So were you that much different than you were on the Not the really. Other show? I'd say there was a brand extension. Yeah, a brand. But do you see that as your brand? I think that... Uh, and is it you? I think it's partly me. Listen, in, in business, whether I'm editing a newspaper, competing in Celebrity Apprentice, judging a talent show, I think I can be pretty to the point. Whether I'm interviewing somebody, I can be... To the point is a little bit different than the way Simon described you. I think he was being, as he would put it, a bit of showbiz, darling. Yes. I, I think you shouldn't take these things too literally. Because I can be pretty yeah. tough, pretty uh, tough speaking. But underneath it, I think I have a good heart. I think that I've always tried to see the good in people as well. Um, but if people want to have a scrap or a feud or a punch-up, I'm your guy too. And back to the thing in London, just for a second. Is that it, what is it about the people who want to see you down? Well, I think part of it is I'm I'm anchoring one of the biggest shows on cable television okay. in the world. So it's I mean, that it's jealous in the. I think a little bit of that. Yeah. I think also. But is it something about you? I think I think I've rubbed a few people up the wrong way yeah. because you did something to them, or because you were just a character that I've annoyed never, them. I think there are certain media people in Britain, in particular, who think that they are above any form of scrutiny or criticism themselves. I used to target those very people precisely for that reason. Whether it's the Jeremy Paxmans, the Ian Hislop, the editor of Private Eye, right. Jeremy Clarkson. Well, man, Private Eye has been... It's been brutal. 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 And so why shouldn't we be brutal back? You know, I come from a school of uh, thought, a family full of soldiers. This is Chicago rules, they say. It's Chicago rules, yeah. and I have no problem... They use a knife, you use a gun. Yeah, there's a guy here at the moment, Andrew Sullivan, who's right. been giving me weekly bangs on the nose and yet he throws his toys out of the pram and, when I bang him back and I don't understand why if you punch somebody in the nose in a school playground the best defense is to punch them back and so you punch Andrew Sullivan back and he he, he writes another piece I couldn't give him monkeys <laughs> all right so you so all of a sudden you have become a big-time celebrity making big bucks and and then Larry King is retiring and everybody wants that most people wanted that job mm -hmm. Um, or, or a lot of people did. I'm not sure who wanted or who didn't. I'm not even sure who the competition was. Um, how, how come you got that job? Well, I've been doing a big interview show in Britain. It's the most uh, popular in terms of viewers' interview shows still. You still do it? Yeah. It's called Life Stories. They're one-hour specials on big names, celebrities, politicians, public figures, and so on. You can get this by going to the BBC. Is it BBC? It's ITV. Oh, so you go to an ITV website and you can see these yeah. interviews? Yeah, you can see okay. them. I've been doing... I've done about 50 of them now, 50 yeah. shows. Big... Oh, for Winfrey type people. Yeah, Elton John, Simon Cowell, you know, right, and so right, on. Right. British Prime Minister Gordon Brown and so right. on. And big audience, they're, they're three hour tapings right. and they air for an hour and they are people's life stories. Uh, CNN, I, uh, my manager used to be Larry King's manager. Right. And he was aware. Who would that be? John Ferreter. Right. And uh, he was at William Morris at the time. He looked after Larry for over a decade. He'd done his last few deals. And he was aware that there was a change coming and everyone was aware. It was being written about all over the place. And he uh, knew all the CNN executives, and he said, look, you know, if you're looking for someone to do some interview shows for you, not Larry King's slot, just interview shows, then my client, Piers, you may only know him from the talent show or The Apprentice, but get some tapes in of his interviews with these people because they're, they're quite something, which they are. They're, they're very intense and very full-on interviews, but they show a range of interviewing right. which they wouldn't have been aware of. And they got them in, and then they called me in for an interview. And we had a half-hour slot. It became two hours. And at the end of it, uh, according to some of them who were there, they decided that I you was the guy. potentially the guy. And who is that? Who is they? Well, some of them are still there. Uh, yeah. Ken Jots is right. the president of the American CNN at the moment. Uh, you had uh, a number of the executives there. Um, and they just... Uh, John Klein was still John there Klein. at the time. Now, is anything different between what you did on the, the aforementioned show mm. for ITV and what you do on CNN? Yeah, because I think, I think actually what it's become is a show which takes the best of what I do for ITV in terms of the interviews with big stars, so whether it's Barbara Streisand or the Dalai Lama or I've got Charlie Sheen this week or whoever it is, there's that type of big in-depth interview. But also, if you're at CNN, you've got to better do news. And I think that we have proven ourselves now, particularly with the gun issue, but other things too, that, that the tabloid skills, if you like, of the vivid and dramatic presentation of news and events, which is what tabloid actually means, uh, can be put onto a show like mine at CNN. 
and bring these issues to life. And they can be animated and they can be um, argumentative and I can be opinionated without crossing that line, which you have to be careful about at CNN, of being politically partisan, which is not what they want. Um, CNN, as a global brand, prides yeah. itself on not being yeah. Republican or Democrat. And I mean, the idea is Fox is more to the right. Yeah. MSNBC, and MSNBC is more to the left. No point chasing those two yeah. uh, coattails. And actually, there's a great premium in being an independent voice in the middle. But it doesn't mean that the anchors have to be mute or don't have to have opinions. And I'm very happy that I've had the support of CNN to be opinionated about things like the gun issue, which I don't really view as political anyway. Um, but I'm happy about that because I think it makes for better television. And, and what